Hello there. In this special edition of Moving Day, we're travelling to Devon to meet a family of animal lovers who are on the brink of fulfilling a lifelong ambition. Yes, in four days' time, they're up in sticks from their farmhouse and moving 165 miles north to Shropshire to start a new life and a new business. Right, Gavin, shall we get there? OK, one thing, Sal, I'm driving. Oh, you know I prefer to drive myself. You read the map. I feel sick reading the map. Meet the residents of Volscombe Farm near Tiverton in Devon. There's a lot of them, and they're all moving with their owners, the Rowe family. Only child Katie is a successful show jumper. At the age of 28, she's finally getting something she's always dreamed of, an equestrian centre where she can run competitions for horses and their riders. It's fun, I enjoy it, there's people to meet. It's an amazing life. I love it. I just absolutely want to do this. It's sort of, that is it. Former riding school Highgrove on the outskirts of Craven Arms in Shropshire will provide the perfect location. Mum Christine and Dad Graham are moving away from their beloved Devon to make all their daughter's dreams come true. See the country air already. <laughs> Beautiful here. You've got flashing your cheeks. Good morning. Hello there. Good morning. Hi, Graham. Hi, Hi, Sally. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hi, Christine. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Hi. This is the most glorious setting you have here. It's quite nice. Yeah. Quite yeah. nice. Don't quite undersell nice. it. It's Stunning. fantastic. We're so excited to be out of the city, I can't tell you. Really? Yes. You live in London, do you? Or? Yeah, we live yeah. well, kind of nearby. But anyway, yes, it's lovely to be out of the city. We're ready for a cup of tea. Is there any chance? Yes. That would be nice. Come in. Yes, thank you very much. This is Tess. you, sir. Hello, Tess. You're going to be working hard today. Am I? Yes, you saw. I only came for a brew. This is definitely a horsey house, isn't it? Farmhouse <laughs> kitchen. It is indeed. This is great. Very pleasant. How long have you been here? We've been here 15 months now. 15 months at all? Yeah, yes. it was just a stopgap measure. How could this be a stopgap when you're in the middle of such paradise? <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't suit our actual requirements for the future for Katie. So you've got basically four days to go until the big move. Yes. How organised are you? Well, Christine's organised. I'm afraid <laughs> I'm a disaster. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he so bad? Oh, he's pretty untidy at the no you know, normally. Yeah. But um, to, to pack boxes, it's a nightmare. So I do it with Katie, basically. Would you, you like a second opinion on what you've done so far? I wouldn't mind. Right, I'll go and have a look. I'll let you guys Absolutely bond fine. and I'll Thank go and have a look much. and see how you're getting on with your packing. Yeah, all right. <laughs> he likes to go and suss out, get an overview of the packing that needs to be done. This has obviously got to be the lounge, and the first thing that smacks you in the face here is the amount of horse paraphernalia. We've got paintings, we've got a life-size model here almost, a little rocking horse. They've already started on the packing, they've really got to get a giddy-up because they've only got four days left. And loads of videos, and guess what? It's about horses. On to the bedrooms now, and we've got a little someone here who's quite sorry for himself. This is Jess, this is the dog. Now I know that the dog's both blind and deaf and 18 and a half years old. That's about 100 in human years. So I won't step over him and disturb him. But that's Katie's room. You can see loads of horsey stuff in there and a lot of cuddly toys as well. They've all got to be packed up, ready for the move. That just leaves the last room, which is the, the master bedroom. And in here, a lot of stuff's already bagged up, ready to go. One good thing that's often overlooked is all your pictures and frames that you have on the wall. They've obviously got all these off, packed up and ready to go. Good time saver. Let's have a quick rundown on exactly who's who and what's what. How many animals have you got? Give me a quick rundown. We've got ten ducks, mm -hmm. ten chickens, yeah. two dogs, yeah. a cat, six horses. Um, and a goldfish. And a goldfish. And, a goldfish, and yeah. two dogs that died some time ago, but they're still with us. Oh. And <laughs> we'll be carrying them along with us. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. yeah. They get carried in a special coffin or something. Yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, they're in their little caskets. And they come with you, not oh, just bury them here in the No, house. no, no. no, no. We, no. We're taking them with us. But they're, at the moment, they're in separate containers because they used to fight each other. <laughs> so, so you thought in keep... death they should be a part as well? Yeah. Basically. <laughs> I can't believe we're getting into all this. That's, 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 that's why totally it sounds a bit morbid, actually. Are, <laughs> it's not morbid at all. They were our friends for years. Oh, so, I couldn't bear true. to leave them. They've got to come with us. Whoa, this room here, you can't even shut the door. It's so cram-packed full of stuff. Evidence of a lot of packing going on here. But it makes me wonder, they've only been here for 15 months. How much of that's still in the bags and the boxes from when they moved into it? 
little home office just to keep themselves busy to say that and there's a few things to come in here again evidence of a lot of packing that's taken place already loads of boxes ready to go which is a plus sign we're hoping that you will be able to help with moving the chickens and the ducks in one of the vans they'll, they'll have to go in their, their traveling cages all oh, right first so first thing. thing in the morning because i'll be here first thing yeah, in the morning, first thing in the morning i can help you get them that'd be absolutely yeah. fine yeah. Yeah. yeah because you'll yeah. somebody will have to open the cage yeah. and another one catch them and then put them in put oh them you in. have to actually lift them up by oh, hand. yes yeah. and then <laughs> do you wear gloves for that kind of thing i don't know you don't have to. You don't I, have I to. Do. You probably, yeah, we can give you some gloves, yeah. You're laughing at me, Graham. I can yeah, see. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. I'm not a country girl, I'm a city girl. <laughs> but, you know, You'll I'm enjoy I've got it. big heavy boots on, it's fine. With no sign of Katie in the house, I've tracked her down to the field with the horses. This is Casper. Yeah, yeah he's Casper. five years old. Yes. Bless him. This is Popeye. Actually, his real name's Pop Song, his racing name. Um, his dam was Top of the Pops. And he's won six National Hunt Race competitions for us. OK, this is Flirtino. She's a retired racehorse as well as Popeye. She retired to become a broodmare. We still have, his fo have the foal. Um, she was what we call unrideable. And she has, on two occasions, broken my dad's nose. And this is an example of behaviour when they get jealous of each other. Oh, is that what's going on here? Yeah. They're all crowding because around was, now. I've got yeah. nothing to give anyone. He knows you're an animal person. Do you think I'm an animal? I think I'm an animal person. You are, because horses and dogs, they know who to like and who not to like. If they turned away from you, you'd worry. Then you, but you're being quiet, you're being calm. They know you're good. <laughs> you're getting your ear nibbled. <laughs> yes, I've already got two bruises from you, mate. <laughs> He's being very affectionate and wondering why I'm not talking to him. It seems Graham isn't a man that throws anything away, and it's all coming with them. The farm gates, the show jumps, the cement mixer, the feed, the tack, the pallets, the hay, the straw, the bedding. And of course, all the cuddly toys as well. Yeah, definitely, we've got lots of those as well. So you need a hand moving this lot as yeah, well then, right? Yeah, definitely. If you get in the doorway, I'll throw a few bales over to you. Now, not being ignorant, do they eat this stuff or sleep on it? Or both? They, no, they only eat it. This they is good quality it. hay, I can assure you. OK, and the straw's what they sleep on. And the straw is over there, yeah. Hey, Wonderful. Pretty horse novice here. So if I throw the bells over to you, ready for the, the man when he's... Horses are priority number one. When, we, when they go, we go. And it's basically as simple as that, isn't it, I mean, it's not as if you can tell them the day before, listen, you're about to move house, everybody. I do you try. Move fields. Do you speak to them and tell them that? Yeah, I do speak to them. I told Muster today that... Yeah. You were coming to be good. Oh, this she, is mustard here. Mustard's that one. That's we mine. We're going to say hi to mustard. We're going to say hi to mustard. Now that he knows that we're coming. She. She, well, sorry. Mustard's a she. <laughs> While clearing out one of the barns, Graham fills me in on how he got to where he is today. Yeah, I was in the Merchant Navy from when I left school. I went to college in Southampton as a young officer. Made a fool of myself all around the world and eventually ended up as a master mariner in the Merchant Navy after ten years. I came ashore and unfortunately nobody would employ a merchant navy officer so I set up myself a frozen food distribution business in Plymouth and uh, it did extremely well. And it was Graham's business successes in Devon that funded the family's passion for horses. She's one for the polos aren't you darling? You one for the polos? Yeah, do you want to say please? Uh, we should teach them the odd party trick. Oh Good girl! <laughs> that's her saying please? That's her saying please. I said, I've got to have her, and I haven't regretted it a day. She just suits you as soon as you sit on her. You know oh, she's going to go We have gold for you. an amazing rapport. Chemistry, we, yeah. we know what each other's thinking. Yeah. She, I'll tell her the jump off course, yeah. which is basically you've got to ride against the clock, and I'll count the fences out like say one, six, seven, two, mm. four. She knows it. She can count. I swear to it. And people have seen it. I've lost my reins, I've got no stirrups. I'll tell her the course, red fence, green fence. She knows what she's doing. So communication is key. Yeah. I can tell that you just live for horses. Oh, yeah. Eat, sleep, breathe horses, don't yes. you? Yes. Yeah, some people probably say too much, but I love them. It's just kind of take over your whole life. I yeah. mean, that's the whole reason why you're moving is because yeah, of exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, it's hopefully to develop an equestrian centre, but also to maybe move on in the show jumping world as well. So what do you reckon, Gab? Is this a mammoth move or what? 
huge move. I can't believe Graham wants to take all this stuff with him. That's the hay, the pallets, the chicken wire, absolutely everything. And all the animals, there's so many of them. It's like Noah's Ark. And I was having a chat with Katie as well about getting the animals, the horses, onto the horse boxes. And that's quite a tricky thing to do because they've got to be in the right frame of mind to get onto the plank, to get up onto the horse box. I must admit, I've never seen a horse on the train or on the bus or anything like that, yeah. so I don't know if they travel well. So what are you going to do moving day? I think priority, I've got mm. to be up at the new place ready for the arrival of all the animals and the removal men and everything else. Right, so I'll stay here and um, deal with the live poultry then. OK. Coming up, we meet the new residents of Volscombe Farm. But will poor old Jess be making the journey to Shropshire? He's been with us for a long time now. And it's quite upsetting to see him as he is today. In just four days' time, the Rowe family are moving to this, their new home in Shropshire. Highgrove is set in 18 acres with just about everything required to house their menagerie of animals. But back in Devon, Christine's realised they've still to find somewhere for the 10 ducks and 10 chickens to live. Sounds like a job for me. Now, you've marked on here the house. Yes. And the pond in the back the garden. Pond. Now, uh, I'm going to draw you a little diagram here. But um, very simple. Yep. What I think we're going to do is something 20 foot by 20 foot. The That's what I do. And uh, temporarily, I think, yes. we're going to put them together. Yes. So we'll have um, two separate areas, houses for the chickens, C and D. Whereabouts, sort of geographically, would you want them put? Well, the houses? Yes. Um, Probably um, along the fence here. I think that's probably about the flattest okay, sort towards, of towards area. Okay, towards the back, yep. kind of there, over to one side. Yeah. I should be able to get these knocked up before the rows get there. to be residents of Volscombe Farm live just 15 miles away. Alpacas are related to llamas. There is a growing industry in the UK farming them for their luxurious wool. Volscombe Farm is hilly and will be perfect for the alpacas who apparently love a good view. Alpaca breeders Rachel Chaz and Josh have brought three of their animals over to check out their new home to be. Good, and so we've brought our little friends here just to have a wee play around to see what they're in for. Absolutely, they're going to inspect the fields. Yes. And see if they like them. Because the views are very important to them, aren't they? Well, they like a hump to stand on to survey the surrounding Ooh. countryside. <laughs> so this is Talisman, Micah, yes, and Icon. Oh yes, scampering about on the new turf. Alpacas are native to South America, but there are already 10,000 of them in the UK. I mean, you've got so many, it's 180. Yes, we have, it's yes. It's a crazy number. Have they all got names? Oh, yes, yes. How can you Because they all have to have pedigree registers, so, they regist you know, registered, so they've got to have names. And all mine have classical names, and Chaz's have sort of other names. Oh, it's his and hers. <laughs> really numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like his and hers alpacas? Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, there's some fantastic views up here, Talisman. You're going to love it. Talisman, what do you think of that? Beautiful views. Look at the rolling hills. Do you know what? I think it'll be perfect. But before the alpacas ship in, something nasty's got to ship out. Uh, we have a huge muck heap, uh, and the fields normally get de-pooed, so to speak. <laughs> That's a polite way of putting it. Uh, twice a day. Twice a day? We do it twice a day. Um, it's just that it's easier. With six horses, they generate an awful lot. That's a lot of muck, isn't <laughs> it? It is an awful lot. If you've just got one or two, you can do it less. So is that a case of a wheelbarrow and a pitchfork? Basically, yes. Unless now, you can afford one of these posh um, vacuums that go around and well, hoover it all up. Well, we can't afford one of the posh vacuums, but I've got an idea. On moving day itself, um, I, I would offer to do it, but I'm going to be at the new place. I think right. that's probably the way that's to go That's your excuse. There. Sally's going to be here helping you get everything sorted out. Can perhaps Sal give you a hand That would that? be brilliant. Graham would be absolutely delighted. The weather's taken a turn for the worse, so we're taking cover. I'm absolutely gutted I'm not going to get a chance to write Willow oh, today. I know, it's terrible out there. With a the new equestrian centre, the Rose hope to make money from being a livery yard. That's a horse hotel to you and me. Also on offer will be extras like grooming, saddle cleaning and running competitions in their new menage. Menage is a, an area which has got a decent surface, so it's a nice regular surface. It's got bark down, 
where it's sort of fenced oh, off. Lovely, yeah. So you've got control, it's flat, it's level, which we haven't got round here. Valscombe Farm has other problems that get in the way of it being a successful equestrian centre. Unfortunately, we've got very bad lane access. It's very, very narrow, and large lorries can't get in or out safely. And also, the land around here is very hilly. Um, we've got no level land to put show jumps on, which can affect horses jumping. It wouldn't be safe. And there's just nowhere sort of around to be able to sort of control that number of people. But the new place fits the bill perfectly, and Gav's gone up there to have a look around and meet the current owners. Fresh air at last. Hi, guys. Hi, Gavin. Good morning, Gavin. Welcome to Highgrove. Caroline. Nice to meet you, nice Arthur. You. How are you doing? Hi. Nice. Right, let's have the ground tour, then. Caroline and Arthur Roberts designed Highgrove as a purpose-built riding school. They work with the architects and builders on every detail while they camped out front. The school opened less than two years ago, but despite being a big success, ill health has meant they've had to sell it on. Do you think you'll uh, feel a little bit upset about it? Yeah, most probably yeah. we will be very upset about it. So um, blood, sweat and tears went into this? Yes. <laughs> Lots of blood, sweat and of, tears here. A lot of blisters. <laughs> A lot of hard work. And having to live in a static caravan. Um, yeah. Yes. Was that the hardest bit for you, do you think? Um, yes, I think it was. <laughs> now, you've met the new people that are taking it over. Yeah. And um, do you think they'll uh, going to make a go of it? I do, yes. I think mm. we've had the right people to take it over. I think they're going to do very well from here. Um, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential here to go forward with, and I think they're the right people to do it. Three days later, the team are here to pack up for the move, and it's a big one. There must be about 30 spades, 10 brooms, three pickaxes, sledgehammer, hose pipes, ladders, oh, steam cleaner, mower. 18 wheelbarrows, 22 dustbins, bricks, building blocks, sack trucks, batteries. And last but not least, Graham's making them take two tonnes of ornamental stone. All this granite that's going on board now, we collected many, many years ago. And it's going to travel to its final resting place now, I hope. Up in Shropshire, I'm cracking on with my flat pack poultry pens ready for the arrival tomorrow. Um, the construction of these is particularly good, and uh, all the timber that they've used here has all been dipped. That's why it's green in colour, and uh, it just means it's been weather treated. So, stuff like this will probably last you 15, 20 years. Whereas, if you just use normal timber that is untreated, after about a year, you'll probably find it will start to rot. I know that this one's a chicken shed as well because it's got a unique part to it as obviously they use their chickens for eggs, so you've got to be able to access that. And there's two lift-up panels here with a clever little bit of damp-proof course there just to make sure that it's watertight, which is another good idea. And all of these will just bolt into position. And the best way they've found of doing this is just to have some little nuts and bolts. This one's got a handy handle on it to make it easier to use. And you just lift up the side of the chicken coop like so, drop it in position, and then tighten it up. It's as easy as that. With all their kit and caboodle loaded up, the Rose will only have to worry about the animals in the morning. Their own horse box can only take two of the horses, so a specialist horse transporter has been booked to move the other four. There we go, that was nice and easy, nice little place for the chickens to live. One over there for the ducks. What I'm going to do is leave them here for the moment until the rows finally get here, because they are quite portable. You can easily move one of these between two people and put them wherever you want. I personally think they're going to move them that way a little bit, and I'm going to put in some runs around them as well, so the chickens and ducks can obviously come out of their little houses and run around without getting interfered with by the rest of the animals that they've got here. It's the eve of the big move. It's rather peculiar feeling really I can't really call it excitement um, but um, anticipation I suppose really more than anything I think is because it is so quiet and rural whereas obviously where we're going is, is it's very nice and very peaceful but it just doesn't have the same 
uh, Devon qualities, I suppose, that, that we, we've got here. We've been very lucky here. We've just fed the horses for the last time. We've put the chickens and ducks to bed for the last time. We've told them this is their last day here. I think they were quite interested in knowing that. The cat, Smudge, she's just gone to bed for the last time here. Jesse's still asleep. He's feeling a little bit poorly. Jesse, I just hope his future is going to be at Highgrove, but in my own mind, I think he hasn't got long to go. And it's sad. He's been with us for a long time now. And it's quite upsetting to see him as he is today. Based on previous news, normally my stress levels have gone off the roof by the time I get out of bed. Once the horses are on, the four of them, and that sort of one headache over, but it will be extremely panicky. What's going on in the house won't be sort of entering my mind. It will be getting Popeye and Flirty, Mustard and Pip on board. I mean, Mother's not completely happy with the move, but... Well, I think she's coming round to it. She'll be happy when she gets up there and settled in. Coming up, it's moving day and all the plans go horribly wrong. We're going to find her. I promise you we'll find her. <laughs> oh, look. And, that, and that's Willow. You see, Willow, Willow is now there. calling for her friends. And, oh, and there no. it is. Well, this is it. It's the morning of the Roe family's moving day. Now, Gavin has gone ahead of the party up to Shropshire. Meanwhile, I'm here in Devon and there's, hello, good morning, little Tess the dog. I'm here to help with all those animals, hence the outfit. I'd like to call it farming chic. Good God. Happy yeah, moving really. day to you. I wouldn't say it was very happy at the moment. We've Why had not? a bit of a stressful morning. What on earth has well, gone on? The horse box man who came to collect the four arrived an hour and a quarter early. And he really shocked us because we were up here getting things ready and then the cat escaped and that's really distressed christine so the cat vanished katie came down the house i came up we couldn't find the cat anywhere and the man wouldn't stay so we had to go in the field get the horses big surprise they're covered in mud wet through and bring four of them in which absolute chaos it caused you can well imagine we had to boot them up pop their rugs on put tail bandages on and these two were left behind. It was an absolute disaster for them. Oh. They've been running amok. I mean, you can see the state of poor old Casper. He's supposed to be white like that. He's absolutely filthy. Yeah, he's been... So the, all horses are gone apart from these two? Yeah, that's right. You're kidding. So, so Katie's already gone too? She's gone, yeah. She left uh, at about half past seven this morning. Katie must have been in a terrible state because she would have had to, to rush to get the horses ready. And Which, she personally has not had time to say goodbye to, do it, to the to farm. Do, to do anything. She, she just brought the horses in. Yeah. She was soaking wet through, covered in mud. And she just jumped in her car and drove away. Didn't say goodbye to anything or anybody. Oh, you see, that's not good. Yeah. Is she? <laughs> oh, look. And, that, and that's this. Willow, you see. Willow, Willow is, is now sad. calling for her friends. And, oh, and there no, it is. You see, just, here we go again, you see. It this just is the, makes your heart this bleed. Is, this is the panic. Well, and they're going to be together. They'll yeah. be reunited in about five hours' time. Yeah. Hello there, there's yeah. Casper. See, this is back. the worry. Casper has come now because he's wondering where they are. They think that you might know where their friends I are. I know, I can see that. That's why they're coming up so yeah, close. And you can see by their eyes and everything that, you know, they look looking... so yeah. on. Look at the state. The weasel's going to be like this all the way through the journey, which is going to be so uncomfortable, wet, dirty, yeah. in that horse box. Hi, Christine. Hello, Sally. Hi. Not a good start to your day. Uh, no, not really. I had a crazy thought that I would actually stay behind until this afternoon and sort of see if she... When it, when it was all gone quiet, when everybody yeah, had gone, yeah. um, see if she can whether she actually around. sort of it came might back. it might take her a couple of days anyway. So um, no, no, she, she she'll come back. I'm absolutely we'll sure she'll come back when everybody's gone. Because she did, um, like on Friday when you were all down, mm. you know, she she was gone. Uh, but as soon as everybody had gone. She, she came back. Here's at the back door. It's going to make the move so, for you so hard today it's awful. because when you get to Shropshire, your heart's not going to be in it no. because you'll be thinking of smudge. I, I should be here because all I can think of is. Oh, bless. <laughs> I know, but look, we're going to find her. I promise you we'll find her. All I think of is her little face at the back door. The thing is, Luke, she's still around. She's still here. Oh, I know. She just, I, know. I mean, and you know. <laughs> This is an extraordinary day, a moving day is always when things, plans go awry. And so far it's been a terrible start to the day. But, um, you know, she's going to be found. She belongs to you, she's your cat. You know, she belongs to this family. So I'm sure we're going to find her. Up at Highgrove, I'm meeting one of the existing livery customers who plans to continue renting stables from the Rose. 
Hello there, you must be Teresa. Yeah. Not you, you. Hello, how are Hello. you doing? I'm Hello. Gavin. Hello. So you use the livery yard here then? Yes. And uh, you're just renting some space? Yes. How many horses have you got here at the moment? Um, three here, three on the yard and three foals. Okay. And two in the field. Uh huh. Tigger and digger across there. Tigger and digger. Now, um, these ones have just had foals, haven't they? Yes. So yes. that's why you've got to keep them the dry and look after yes. them a little bit more than yes, normal. Yes, they're very lucky to be here. Um, how much do you have to pay to keep them here? What's it normally cost a week to keep a horse? I don't know. I haven't got a horse. <laughs> Roughly, what does it cost? A lot of money. Well, give us a clue. £30 a stable. £30 a stable. That's yeah. a week. Yes, a week. I'm just schooling this one because he's a younger horse. What, teaching uh, it maths or trigonometry or something? <laughs> dressage. No, dressage. Flat you hair. have to explain it to the people at home. <laughs> You're doing all your horsey chat. <laughs> dressage. Yes. That means dressing up rather well, smart. It, it's and schooling it, yes. Schooling, schooling it, OK. But I show horses. I show ridden and working hunters. But at the moment, everything's on a standstill until my new stables are built. She's certainly got a work cut out with this one. Back at Valscombe Farm, Graeme's got a lovely job for me to do. It's a little bit muddy. Thank you. Just wheel this right into the mud, do I? Yeah, just to the left. We'll start along the, the duck, duck run. See the first poo there on the left-hand side? Where? Oh. Push it in. Yep. Like you would. Ooh. God. OK. Hang on. It's all coming off again. Yeah, it's all right. Don't worry about that. You go back a second time into the barrow. Go and pick up the other little bits. A bit of a nuisance. I usually pick it up with my hands. Would a shovel not be easier for this sort of a job? No, you'd find it really difficult with a shovel. Okay. I oh, can, I, I can assure you. I speared it. You speared it. <laughs> There's a beauty there, Sal. It's still got the steam rising off it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have you. The the fl oh, the smell is not pleasant at all. What has to be done? It when has one, to be done every single day. When one works day, in the farm. Or even twice a day. This is what one does. It's about speed. There's about another 1,500 of these round the field. Okay. At last, Katie makes it to Highgrove. Gloves on straight away. Yeah, well, the horse is priority. So How long have we been in the truck now, then? Four hours. I've just, well, four hours, 20 minutes. So we want him to get them off in a minute. Okay. Like, in a second. Well, Conan, I'm here to help. Brilliant. What have we got to do? Well, first things first, we find the driver of the vehicle. <laughs> Hello there, mate. I'm Hi. Gavin. Hi. How are you? Good boy. Can we take this one? Pip. Hello, Pip. Yeah. I've got a Pip at home. Yeah. Oh, must. Another retired racehorse. And we've got this in the one next to him? Yeah. Let me get the door again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, so you just got to grab them and then I chuck yeah. them just, to you? Yeah, well, you can put them in here and I'll put the lid down. OK, okay. for each one? Yeah, because otherwise they fly out again. Okay. Here's one. Give it to, give it to Sal. Mm -hmm. yep. Straight up that end. There you are. And you go, we saw what's your beak. There you go. And then we've got to do that, otherwise they'll fly out again. So How many are you going to get in each of these um, We're going to get ten in here. Oh, my God. There you go. Go in, in there. there. Thank yeah. you very much. Well done. Come on, then. Come on, then. Just grab him. you got him. <laughs> no, come on, now. Don't got you. Either. I got him. I've got him. You've got him. I've got him. Come on, sir. I quite they, they lie Careful. Right. They lay those big brown eggs. Beautiful. Oh. Right. Good teamwork, guys. This is quite heavy, actually. Yeah. Can I help? Yeah, if you give Christine a hand at the end. Yeah, there. that's bad, isn't it? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Careful now. The horses have their tails bandaged up and wear protective boots to ensure their comfort during transit. Can I hold that? Good boy. Okay, good stuff. Oh. And it looks like Jess is going to make the journey after all. Well done, go. that's a lovely bed for you. Here we go. He's going to be all right. Good. He's going to be fine. Relief. All animals, check. Apart from smudge. Oops. I wonder where she is. Oh well. Well, this is a new adventure. Yeah. It's got to do this journey. So. 
I just keep seeing her little face well, if, when if she you, comes if down. You want, then, if you just, because you can easily catch up with me, or it doesn't matter even if you're arriving late, does it? You just stay around. Except for a I've bit. got to remember the way, haven't I? When I. Yeah, but that's not difficult. I mean, if you're thinking maybe by the time all of us clear off, it'll oh, just be you and your own, and maybe yeah. Smudge will come I mean, to if you. If I sort of wait half an hour, wait half an hour, wait half an hour, and then yeah. I'll, I'll catch you up. The removal team are negotiating those narrow lanes and are travelling up in convoy to Shropshire. The Rose have sold their four-bedroom farm bungalow set in 10 acres of rolling Devon countryside for £435,000. And they've bought a two-year-old purpose-built equestrian centre with 18 acres of land on the outskirts of Shropshire's Craven Arms. It cost them half a million pounds. Three and a half hours after setting off, Graham and I have made it to Highgrove. And Christine's caught up too. Did you get the cat? <gasps> yes! She's in the box. Oh, fantastic. I'm so I went, pleased. I walked all the way around the fields, calling and calling her, and eventually she emerged from the hedgerow. Never thought she'd arrive, but you have done. Smashing. <laughs> Good to have you back. Reunions all round. Here comes the pit. I'll well, shut the gate, man. Uh, <laughs> a master, evil. Four. Oh. Well, I count six there. Is that the right amount? Yeah. Just about. Or five and a half? Yeah. Five and a divvy one. Oh, they'll be so happy now. I have to say, Graham, my, my hands are still smelling like chickens and ducks. I've washed right. them about ten times. Can you, um, Graham, yeah. smell my hands. There's so much noise and there's people really bringing him. Oh, I'll get you on the bed. Yeah, he's nice and cosy here. Oh, his little legs have just given way. This is desperate. Yeah. Well, why don't we try and keep this room clear just now? Yeah. Is there a lot of yeah. furniture to come in here today or not? There won't be mountains of just, no. well, just a three-piece suite and a television, really. Yeah. That's all to come. We could even get them to keep that in that uh, hallway just now, do you think? Or, no, well, you'll need some to sit tonight. Yeah. yeah. The removal lorries arrive. While they unload all the outdoor stuff into the barns, finally we can have a good look round the house. Yes, rather nicely. Oh, cooking. this is so modern, isn't it? It's fantastic. S look at the cooker, you. Really? <laughs> and this the is lounge. our lounge. Beautiful. It's Lots of light coming in again. Yeah. This is great. Yes, we've got quad quadruple aspect with the windows all the way round. That's very rare in itself, isn't it? Yeah. And a, gorgeous. a lovely fireplace as well, all working? It definitely worked. Yes. yes. It was very, very yep. warm when we first came in here. Oh, this Master is this is Oh, now I had washed your feet in here, dear. Gavin. Oh, look what they've taken. Lovely car. What have they taken? Beautiful wrought iron um, forearm. Candelabra type. Beautiful. That they were meant to have left. <gasps> were they? It was on the fixtures and fittings. Oh, yes. Agreed. <sighs> Maybe they might have just forgotten, or perhaps Jeopardy. because they put it that. You can that see that where so they've changed the um, ceiling rows up. Did it there? match the. Um, the yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, and that, I saw it and I, I desperately wanted that. Well, don't worry, if they've agreed thing. on the fixtures and fittings, I can't I'm sure that In fact, I think they've it. changed a lot of the light fittings. Because they're all um, plain bulbs, yes. aren't they? Yeah. I think they've been around and changed all the ceiling well, roses. We, we've got the list of fixtures and fittings. We if not, you can be remunerated. Highgrove has a lot of rooms, so it's just as well Katie's printed up labels to stop any boxes going astray. This is perfect for me. I can take two things. You're going to let me sit in this and then carry it? It seems very dodgy. Am I going to die? Hang on. Are you yeah, serious? I'll put it on the level. I'll no, no, put it on no, the no, level. No, I could no, die. No. <laughs> well, this will be a first and moving day. OK. Yeah, you want to show unwrap it first so you can see it's More on the level. More more the level. No, we don't need to see his face. We can see his horse. Right, are you ready for this coin? This is Grand National Moment. If I fall, you die. Right. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to carry me in the house with a... <laughs> what have you made me do? I've got to get off. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> this is such a wind-up. <laughs> and I fell for it. Oh, no. Right. Um, side door. Yeah. 
obviously easy Help. in and out for them. Yeah. Um, the little front one as well. And this even nice little thing, they put a catch at the top here as well, so you don't slam your fingers in it. Oh, that's good. Which is quite tidy. And uh, when you need to check out for the eggs, these lift up either side. They look the business. Oh, that is so sweet. The cockle's the worst. But if he escapes, we won't see him, you see. No, there we go, gone. which we go for? Black the black one. Oh, look at that! Alright. It's still whole. There was a white one in here. And two more. Oh, yeah? So Your breakfast for the morning. Okay, well, he now has a bit of bacon, and we're sorry. We've All got right. that as well. With two thirds of the removal lorries empty, the lads are planning on finishing off the job tomorrow. Now, this is what I call a well earned break. So, your plan of action is this you sleep in the vans tonight, and then no shower tomorrow. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's what was going through my mind. <laughs> But maybe they might let you use the facilities well, here. Maybe. You never know. Yeah, we don't bother as a rule. Not for one night. <laughs> it's a natural smell. Maybe three or four. Yeah. A natural but. smell, Mark. I tell you why, I'm <laughs> coming anywhere near you tomorrow. <laughs> that sounds absolutely disgusting. And then, so tomorrow you come back uh, with the smells. And you uh, then unload and that's you off. Finish. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah? it. We're yeah. off. All done. Good All stuff. Done. Everybody's in need of a decent meal and a good night's sleep. Just as well, Graham prepared something spicy back in Devon. I was just thinking about our little housewarming gift. Instead of doing the sort of horsey farm thing, why don't we get them something where they can pamper themselves? See, I agree with that, because they've got everything they need for all the other stuff yeah. to be going on with. They need something for to help them relax, help A them chill out. A touch of luxury, that's what it's all that about. Would be pleasant. Wouldn't it, Jess? Mm. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yes. Can you buy me a drink or what? Yeah, mm. shall we? Coming up, Gavin does some fencing. And Sally gets her gloves on for something nasty. Ah! Right, it's the day after moving day. And we're in Highgrove, hoping that the Rowe family have settled in comfortably to their new uh, home. Oh, yes. Now, the questions are, has the poor old dog Jess made it through the night? Sal, I hope mm. so. Also, are the fences here yet? And, probably most importantly of all, has the family survived Graham's homemade curry? Really good on. morning, good morning. Hello, Hello Sally, we? nice to see you oh, again. Oh, look, yeah. Jess is still here. This is I great. Yeah, it's amazing. After last night, when you last saw him, he, was, he really wasn't with us, was he? And no. I didn't think he'd survive no. the night. About 10 o'clock, I persuaded him to get up. And he had a little bit of food, went a little circuit outside the house, came back in, and, and then he went back to sleep. Um, how was your dad's curry last oh, night? Oh, excellent. He just sort of swallowed, it went down, it was lovely. On gar, I'm up for a little bit of fencing, but what worries me is these guys have got loads of wood and gates and stuff knocking about. You must be Norman. Choose your weapon, sir. Back to back and ten paces. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Fencing? <laughs> yeah. You were going to do that as well, right. weren't you? So, um, what's happened? This is for the chicken coop, sir. Yes, that's it, yes. Local fencing wizard Norman and his team will be making a 20 by 20 foot enclosure to keep the Shropshire foxes from nabbing the fresh Devon poultry. Now, what about the neighbours? Have you met any of the new uh, neighbours yet? Actually, one of the neighbours wandered in. Very mm -hmm. nice to see him. He's just from over the road in another high grove mm. and he brought our mail. What do you mean another high grove? Well, you... it turns out we've got four high groves. Hi he's high grove farm. And high grove bungalow, no. and high grove cottages, and high grove. How confusing must that be for yeah. Christmas? The same postcode for all of us. Oh, oh that's everybody crazy. keeps getting each other's mail, so we're going down to so the post going... office to try and sort it. We might um, even have to rename the house a bit. I think we're going to be called High Grove House. Mm, I wonder what Prince Charles would have to say about that. <laughs> While the last bits are unloaded, Kerry wants to show me round, but not on foot. Right, ladies, have you got me a horse? Hi, oh, we yeah. have. Good. Oh, it's Willow. Oh, Willow. How are you today, anyway? OK, not too bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Had a good night's sleep? Uh, no, not really. But then it's always strange, and there were all the um, street lights. And, of course, we're not used to street lights at oh, all. Oh, that's a kind of weird thing. Of course, you've got the lane coming up here. Yeah, and all oh. the orange lights, and, and it was really... That's it was disappointing. It was not unpleasant, but different, yeah. you know, and obviously you've got to get used to all the strange noises and... Yeah. Um, yeah, just so yeah, I was not not brilliant, but okay. I don't normally mount from the ground. Oh, that's great. Right. Yep, get the other stirrup in. That's Back's it. nice and straight. Excellent. Katie, your head. riding position is excellent, my dear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
For the Rose, it's not just the day after moving day, it's the start of a whole new business at Highgrove. So you've got your first competition in just a few weeks' time. Yes, I have. A nervous time. It, sort of the, the preparation, the planning. Big horse will, show. Big, well, hopefully it will be big. You've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Like four weeks and yeah. you've just kind of I've got moved to find in the, yesterday. Yeah, I've got to find the computer first. <laughs> I'll help you look for the computer later, but yeah. setting it up, I'm not so sure. Oh, uh, don't worry. I'll just about think I'll manage. Now, Katie, this menage was probably the biggest selling point yeah. to this property. It's the whole reason why you're here. How much does something like this cost to build it the would surface? Cost, the whole thing would cost between 10 to probably 20 grand, depending on whether you wanted a certain surface. There's differences in drainage. But a menage of this size, which is 50 metres by 25 metres across, would probably come in at probably about 15,000. Wow. Yeah. Almost done here with a little chicken enclosure. Materials we use, the wood's tantalised, which means it's dipped in a preservative, stop it rotting. All the metal work, which is the mesh here, all these little fixings and also the hinges from the gate, that's all galvanised, which is a zinc coating which stops any metal rotting away and rusting up as well. Last thing the guys have got to do is just round the outside, you'll see a trench down the bottom here. They've just got to sink in some very fine hold wire, and this is to stop any foxes or any rats or vermin getting into the enclosure as well. How's it been? Has it been all right? Yes, fine, yes. It's very good, isn't it? I'm amazed. It's just a short space of time. Right. Don't be too generous, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, guys. Is there any eggs, mate? Oh, yeah, we must check this. Let's open this one. Do you want this one left open as well for yeah, them? so that they can... Uh... Wow, yes, we've definitely got... I can see two so far. Two? Two. Obviously, they've been a bit lazy this morning, but there we are. They are fresh eggs. The last thing for the removal team to offload is two tonnes of Graham's precious granite. It's worth a fortune, so just as well it's going into its own high-security pen. With the job finally done, the boys can go home to Devon. Katie's desperate to show me round the annex. It's the area set aside for running the business end of Highgrove. Got a lot to unpack here, girl. Oh, yes. It's big, isn't it? This is isn't fantastic it? up it? here. It's got its own little kitchen. Oh, yes, that's yeah. very cute. Nice. And this nice window. Yeah. Lovely heating, lighting, everything. Fabulous, well insulated space. Exactly. Perfect. So, what's going to happen in this, the annex? What we're going to do is hopefully convert this room into holiday accommodation, maybe divide it into two or three rooms. Right. So, what are you going to do with the space right now, immediately? At the moment, we're using it as our sorting sort of location. So, basically, this will be the junk room just now? Yes, the sorting, general finding things that we thought we lost sort of 50 years ago by the looks of it at the moment. So, we're sort of, this is going to be sorting. Once we've cleared it out, gone through sort of the planning and everything, then we start getting the architects in. But Graham isn't just developing the place on the inside. It is, yeah. This area here, what's the plans? What, what would well, you the like plan to do is it? we want to put an indoor school here for holding shows in the evenings and during the winter months. It's going to cost a lot of money. And I think we can have it sort of levelled and it'll be a large indoor school with an arena about 90 by 60 metres. Now, obviously, this is quite probably the most uneven part of your property here. It is, a difficult and, one. And uh, it would require quite a considerable amount of uh, jigging around and a bit of excavation. But the plus side is you've got 18 acres, yeah. so what you dig up, you can always put Yeah, we, we can spread else. it around. And in actual fact, because of the type of soil it is and looking at it, this is a saleable asset. The Definitely. The topsoil there would actually get quite a lot of money. There is a pile of it. So you're always there. wheeling dealing. That's the entrepreneurial well, we, we've side We've got of to you. think about it, haven't we? What are we going to do with this? Sell it. Back in the annex, Katie's got just the job for me. And I think we might require your cleaning um, talent, should I say. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that is horrendous. <laughs> I'm going to have to wear a protective mask. I would. Good job. I'm prepared for action. This area of the house clearly hasn't been used in a long time. It's been four days since we first met the Rose, and we've learned a lot about country life. 
Right, come through here. We've got a gorgeous housewarming gift for you. We feel this whole move has been about the animals. And we thought we'd get something for you, a luxury item to spoil you with. Brilliant. And after a hard day in the saddle, there's nothing better than this <laughs> little bad boy. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh my God. God. I like that. This is a massage lounger. Really? Oh my god, that is fantastic. It's pure leather. Now, Graham, we thought that you could be the guinea pig here. <laughs> I, yes, you. I'd like you to sit in there, and I have to come around the other side to get the control panel going. Gather around. It's on. Now, I'm going to take you to a relaxation mode. Are you ready? You're going to love this. Press and relax. Now, keep your go. fingers there. Now, watch this. God, somebody's stabbing me in the back. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point. Whoops. You see, it's on your back now, and then it's going to move down to your hip. Oh, like and this. then to your oh, this, legs. This is really great. Yeah. It's oh, unbelievable. Oh, this is incredible. And oh. there's a whole instruction manual that comes with oh, it. I like this. Oh, this How do you feel about it? Is that you doing that on the chair? No, this is, this is Sally doing it. It's <laughs> oh, oh, to High Grove House. High Grove Cheers, House. Everybody. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Happy Thank new you. home yes. to you all. And, and many, good luck with many, the many equestrian Thank you so much. It's been great. This has been wonderful. Well, that is just about it from this moving day special here in gorgeous Shropshire. Where we transported from Devon, 10 chickens, 10 ducks, 6 horses, 2 dogs, a cat. A big fat goldfish and 3 human beings. What a triumph it's been. Anyway, if you're about to move house and you want any tips to help your move run smoothly, then why not check out our website. It's itv.com slash moving day. That's it from me and Gav. We'll see you soon. Bye, Bye. for now. A month after moving day, the Rose first equestrian show at Highgrove didn't attract the crowds they'd hoped for, but they have high hopes for the next one.